Around the world, millions of people rush about their daily lives, trying to earn a living, support their loved ones, and enjoy the luxuries of this life. Some, however, step out of their busy lives to look at the bigger picture and to find a somewhat inner peace within themselves. Usually, they search in many different places. They search everywhere until they find it in the most unsuspecting place. In a way of life that is constantly criticised, stereotyped and misunderstood, mainly due to negative representations in the media. They find what they are looking for within Islam. Islam was founded in 610 AD in Arabia by a man named Muhammad, peace be upon him. After he received divine revelations from God passed to him through the angel Gabriel. Muhammad and his followers spread the message of Islam and by 661 AD almost the whole of Arabia and North Africa had accepted this way of life. Since then, the message of Islam still continues to grow rapidly across the globe. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Muslim population has increased by an incredible 235% in the past 50 years, making Islam the second largest religion in the world. Of all the religions practiced in Australia, Islam is attracting more new adherents proportionally than any other faith. Why? What draws people to Islam? which now claims more than one million believers on all continents of the world. Ben is an Anglo-Saxon Australian and has been a devout Muslim for six years. Since he became Muslim, he changed his name to Hashim Abu Bakr Salam. He has devoted his life to Islam and hopes one day to become a sheikh, an Islamic leader. Susan has also adopted this new way of life. After becoming a Muslim at the age of 19, she's now happily married to born Muslim Walid and has a four-month-old daughter, Aisha. How I came to Islam, firstly, I was unemployed, on the dole, sitting at home all day, watching television, watching Foxtel, cable, pay TV, and I saw a few documentaries on the Discovery Channel on Morocco, Syria, and other assorted Middle Eastern countries and I guess at first their culture and their way of dress is what attracted me to Islam. So I looked a little bit further into what Islam was and about Islam and how Islam compared to the Christianity beliefs and it all took forth from there. I went and bought an English translation of the Quran. I read that and the minute I picked up the Quran, I knew that this was something for me. It's now been four and a half years since Susan first said the words La ilaha il Allah Muhammad Arasul Allah. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. A declaration made by all reverts to Islam. I grew up in a, a nominally Christian household and when I was about when I was in high school I started to get much more interested in Christianity. I um, started going to a Baptist church. None of my family went there but I started going to a Baptist church and got really involved. I, you know, I was, think I was doing church things about five days a week. I, um, I was going to youth groups and cell group meetings and church services and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it was when I was about 17 I really started to question why I believed what I believed. 
um, I didn't really know if it was just because I'd been raised to think that it was true or whether I actually thought it was true or not. And I was always very interested in, in other religions. I was very interested, especially in Judaism. Um, and so I decided at that age that I'd just start to see what other religions had to say for themselves. And Islam was always the last religion on the list because I thought Islam was a sexist, outdated, violent religion that no thinking person, especially a woman, would ever get involved in. Hashim lives with his non-Muslim family who have now accepted his Islamic beliefs. They all live happily together with no tribulations. Hashim's mother and brother both have noticed a better change in him and glad he has found something that has led him away from his previous lifestyle. Knowing him as I do, I thought it was just a passing phase that wouldn't last very long, but he's proven me wrong. Now, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it at all. He's a far better person. Uh, there's certain things, obviously, that I don't agree with and everything, but as long as he doesn't try to force it on anybody else and lives a good life, that's all I'm... All I care about. Didn't know exactly what to think. It's strange. But yeah, it's changed for the better in himself. He's doing a lot better for himself. And I think it's because of that, being a Muslim. When Hashim is involving himself with Islamic practices, his family carry about their business and he carries about his. <laughs> Before Hashim came to Islam, he became involved with the wrong crowd. He started getting into drugs and soon enough became a heroin addict. Hashim has now given up the heroin and other mind-altering intoxicants through the discipline of Islam. I used to be a drug addict. Since the age of 13, I'd smoked marijuana every day, constantly, large quantities. Um, by the time I turned 18, I graduated up and became a heroin addict. I was using a good two to three hundred dollars worth of heroin a day, which of course I couldn't afford, so I had to lead a life of crime and so forth. Um, I used to drink a lot of alcohol, I used to sleep around with girls, promiscuous lifestyle, criminal lifestyle, lazy lifestyle. But by the time I turned 19, no, about 20, something in my heart grew and I knew I was doing the wrong thing and I knew that I had to change my lifestyle dramatically and very soon. Otherwise, I was either going to end up dead from a drug overdose or end up in jail. One of the biggest challenges a revert may find upon embracing Islam is learning the Arabic language. Arabic is not at all a prerequisite for becoming Muslim, although many new Muslims attempt to achieve this skill as it helps them to understand the Holy Quranic scriptures in their original form. Alif you can see is Fatha and the next letter is Noon which got Skoon, so Alif and Noon join it becomes An. And the last letter is ta, which has fatha as well. So the sound would be anta. Anta. Ighfir. 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 Ayna. Ayna. Wow. Yawmu. Hashim's teacher and best friend, Hafiz Abdul Wahid, is a qualified scholar of Islam and also the president of the Islamic Council of Australia. Hashim spends most of his time with the Hafiz, enjoying his company and hopes to gain as much Islamic knowledge from him as possible. Alhamdulillah, uh, Brother Hashim came to me about three years ago and he met me in the Islamic library and he told me about his situation and Alhamdulillah since that time he really developed 
and he's learning Quran uh, which is obviously in Arabic and which it, that is very hard for him. Well, I'm going for Collingwood because I feel very sorry for the last I feel sorry for Collingwood. Ah, Mr. Mulder has crying. It's really sad. Nobody feels sorry for Collingwood. I feel sorry for Collingwood, and so does Asia. No, she doesn't. <laughs> Don't you be. Susan faced many hardships when she embraced Islam. Her family and friends found it difficult to accept her religion, and it took them a long time to realise that this was what she really wanted. I think my family had some idea that it might be coming because, um, you know, I started dropping hints about it and maybe they'd seen some of the books lying around. Um, so they sort of might have had some idea that I was thinking about converting. Um, even so, they were really, really, really upset. They, they were just devastated. My um, my mum cried. My brother wouldn't speak to me for a long time. Um, there were, I had a lot of things shouted at me. Um, there were a lot of tears in my house for a long time. Um, it, it did take a lot of working through to um, for things to get better um, with my family, um, and I can understand that, especially now as a mother. Like I know that if my daughter got involved in something that I didn't understand, or I, the only things I ever saw about it on TV or you know Muslims on the street was very negative and horrible, I'd be really upset that she got involved in it as well. <laughs> Luckily, Alhamdulillah, I've managed to integrate all aspects of my life into an Islamic environment. So, whether it be work, fun, or play, it's all Islamic now, which is the way I like it, and which is the way hopefully I can keep it. Hashim, like many other new Muslims, was enthusiastic about his new faith. He wanted to identify himself as a Muslim in this society. To do this, he tattooed his body with markings of Holy Scripture and Islamic symbols, finding out after he had done them that the tattooing was strictly forbidden in Islam. The only tattoo that I... Yes, I regret, but the only tattoo that I still to this day like is this tattoo here on my lower forearm, which says Allah Akbar, which means Allah is great, God is great in Arabic, as when I see that tattoo, it reminds me that I'm Muslim. It's, I, it's, in a sense, in my heart, a constant reminder that I am Muslim, and that I don't forget that I'm Muslim. Till the day I die, it's there, saying that I'm Muslim. But, at the same time, I regret it because it's a hassle everywhere I go. I have to wear long sleeve t-shirts because people look at me strangely, look at me as whether I be a criminal or rough or whatever. And when I enter the toilets, out of respect for Allah, I have to cover this because Allah's name, God's name, out of respect and courtesy to God, shouldn't be taken into places that are unhygienic and filth like toilets and bathrooms and so forth and Muslims look at me strange when I'm watching in the mosque and so forth for prayer Muslims quite regularly say oh that's bad brother you have to take it off it's haram it's haram it's haram yes I know it's haram yes I know I have to take it off but I can't afford to get it taken off but the next brother that says to me oh you gotta have it taken off I'm just going to say, well, you pay to have it taken off for me, and I'll have it taken off. But most of the tattoos I got done before I was Muslim, and then the other ones I had done when I was Muslim before I knew that I was Iran. So may Allah forgive me. Inshallah, I'll get removed one day. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. What's your name, bro? I'm a I'm a shim. In the past few decades and following recent events, Islam has become labelled as a terrorist religion on the account of a handful of uneducated Muslims. Do these more recent events affect the way reverts view Islam? That was a waking call for me 
and showed me that there are many deviant Muslims out there, but there are also many good Muslims out there that do not agree with this September 11 attacks and many Muslims that are against terrorism. So yes, yeah, September 11 affected me in a great way, especially because my wife's American and I spent a lot of time in America shortly after 9-11. We live in an area where there really aren't any other Muslims. It's a very lily white area here. Um, and so, especially when I go to the shops and those sort of things, I get a lot of funny looks. And, you know, I went to our local shopping centre down the road, which was Eastland, and I had people yell out things like terrorist and Osama bin Laden at me. So it's hard because I know when I walk down the street, there are people that look at me and think, oh, that poor oppressed woman, her husband probably forces her to dress like that. Those sort of things. Because I know they think that. Because I used to think that when I used to see Muslim women walking down the street. Um, so dealing with that negative stereotype is difficult, especially when time and time again, when people meet me for the first time and they open my mouth and I speak English, they're actually quite surprised. And the number of people that said to me, gee, you have very good English, is um, it, it starts to wear a bit thin. Like, I feel like saying to them, gee, so do you. Thank you very much. How long have you been in Australia? And same with Muslim brothers and the men walking around dressed like this, dressed in... Jalabir, the long white Islamic robes or turbans and so forth. You laugh that, but they can laugh at me all they want. It makes me a stronger person. But they, not just because you're Muslim, it doesn't make you Muslim, man. You can have a Muslim name and be a shaitan yourself, you know what I mean? It's. Well, I could sum up in Latin and stuff. Uh, just... Both of these two young Australian Muslims are just two of the countless among other Australians adopting the Islamic faith. People of Anglo-Saxon backgrounds who revert to Islam could well pave the path for Australia's general population to try and better understand the faith that is followed by hundreds of millions around the world, including tens of millions of Indonesians and Malaysians not so far from Australia's northern shores. Every day, Australians embracing Islam, a 20th century phenomenon with links to the 7th century. Allah, 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 Allah,